Welcome to the Joe Miller Show, KON Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. We have a great guest lined up for you today. We're going to be talking with Jeff Matter. He is General Counsel for Liberty Institute. This show, the guest made possible by the McPherson Tax Defense Group, 1-800-BEAT-IRS, beatirs.com, B-E-A-T, IRS, serving Alaskans, Americans since 1978 with two generations of tax defense attorneys. Jeff, thank you for joining us on the Joe Miller Show, being willing to talk to us about the Liberty Institute. Thanks, Joe. Great to be with you this afternoon. So you're going to be present at the Freedom 2015 conference that's taking place in Des Moines the weekend after next. That's right. I'm one of the speakers uh, highlighting the the battles uh, that are going on throughout the country concerning religious freedom. National Religious Liberties Conference, Friday, November 6th and 7th. If you want to know more about it, freedom 2015 Org. I'm going to be there broadcasting on Friday and also will be there on Saturday as well. Hopefully get some of the presidential candidates online on air with us. We'll be broadcasting live next Friday. Jeff, uh, you served 19 years in private litigation and then joined with Liberty Institute. I want to cut to some of these exciting cases that you guys are covering right now, including the coach in Washington State who prays at the 50-yard line uh, under fire, I guess the school district trying to fire him. Chaplain, Chaplain Wes Motter, you also represent Let's uh, first just talk a little bit, though, about Liberty Institute. What does it do? What is its mission? Well, our, our, our mission is, is to defend and restore religious liberty pursuant to the principles of the Founding Fathers. Joe, we, we believe that the Founding Fathers understood the importance of our first freedom. And, and there's a reason in the Bill of Rights that, that the Bill of Rights starts with the First Amendment, and the first phrase of the First Amendment is to protect our religious liberty. And, and it doesn't take anyone long to realize that our religious liberties are under assault in this country. Uh, we do an annual survey at Liberty Institute, and, and we've seen just over the last two years a 133% increase in, in attacks on pe- against people of faith. And, and that's only getting worse. As, as more and more you've got an overreaching federal government, overreaching state governments that are coming in and really invading areas of faith. And so the attacks, the increases, is that primarily a consequence of the homosexual agenda, that lobby, or is it kind of a coalition of forces that are fighting yeah. against religious liberties? You know, Joe, it, 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 it's a combination of things, because actually our survey, the, the survey that I'm citing that, that shows the 133 percent, what was done before the Supreme Court's decision in June. Since the Supreme Court's decision in June, just at Liberty Institute, we've seen a 400 percent increase in, in people asking for our help. Oh, and, wow. and that's just as a direct result of, 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 of the Supreme Court's decision. So Extraordinary. we're working. Yeah, we're working on this year's survey. It'll come out in, in, in January, and, and I, I think it's even going to show an, a, even a greater increase. How many attorneys I, you know, do you have working with you right now at Liberty Institute? Yeah, we've got 12 staff attorneys um, from, from the, the, the best law schools in the country. But what you need about us at, at Liberty Institute is we actually partner with volunteer attorneys uh, across the country, uh, you know, men and women who, who are in big law firms, small law firms, who are in private practice but who want to donate some of their time back. So that the result is um, our, our 12 lawyers can, can handle you know, cases across the country and, and really help people who, whose religious liberty rights are being threatened. How many cases are you currently actively overseeing right now? Yeah, right now, over 122 states. This year alone, we've handled over 400 legal matters, but I've got about 100, 110 active matters right now, as I said, in, in, in about 20, 22 states. And obviously that docket's going to increase given the increase in the calls for help in the wake of Oberfeld's decision. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the specific cases. One of the high-profile cases that uh, we've heard about on this program the Washington State case, the coach that is praying apparently at the 50-yard line, school district threatening to, to fire him. Can you tell us anything about what's happening in that case? Yeah, I can, Joe, and, there, and, and there's some, some recent recent developments. Uh, coach Joe Kennedy, uh, uh, a Marine, you never say former Marine, I've learned. My, my colleague who's a Marine, you, you don't say former, but a, a Marine who's retired uh, is a uh, high school assistant high school football coach in Bremerton, Washington. And for seven years, Joe, he, at the conclusion of the game, he goes to the middle of the field and, and literally kneels for, for maybe less than a minute, you know, 15, 30 seconds, and just as a, a prayer of thanksgiving for, for, for the game, for, for his students um, who, who, who've competed. And through the years, uh, it, players ha- have joined him. He didn't ask them. It's all voluntary, and, and they would join them. And, and actually, a parent 
um, wrote to, to the school, and, and actually she wasn't complaining. She was complimenting and saying, what a great guy this is. This is a neat, neat tradition that he started. Well, the school district went to their lawyers, and then their lawyers say, you got to stop. And, and they say things like separation of church and state. And, and the result is the school district has now said that if he does it, um, that there are going to be consequences. And we, we responded at Liberty Institute on behalf of Coach Joe and said, no, that's wrong. That's not the law. Uh, that actually he, he, he doesn't lose his religious liberty rights just because he's a coach. This is a private, voluntary prayer. He's permitted to do it. And, and, and we've asked them to accommodate his religious practices. And the school district has come back, and, and they said no. So we're going to go ahead and file or uh, in the process of filing an EEOC action against the school district because they're threatening to terminate him. And, and he's with well within his rights. And, and the neat thing is uh, Coach Joe has gotten support throughout the country. I bet uh, he has. From, yeah, it, today Congress, 47 con- Congress congressional members signed on to a letter supporting him. And, and we've gotten across the, the political spectrum, um, you know, we, we, we've gotten the Seattle Times, an editorial page there supporting him. So, it, you know, he's well within his rights. And, and the unfortunate thing, and we see this in, in a lot of our cases, you've got government officials who are just misinformed about the law. Um, we don't lose our constitutional rights at the schoolhouse doors. The Supreme Court said that 50 years ago. Uh, we, we just need to get that message across to, to people. And that's part of what this Religious Freedom Conference in Iowa is meant to do. So I'm glad you're going to be there and, 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 and we can spread that message. Right. And again, that's freedom2015.org if you have questions about that conference. One of the things, Jeff, I wanted to ask you about with respect to Coach Joe, when he's out in the field, I mean, is he broadcasting the prayer or is it something that's done just between him and the uh, players that decide to join him? No, it's not over the PA system. It literally, uh, Joe, it, it is literally he kneels at the kneels at the 50-yard line and, and, and says a short prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving. Uh, that's, that, that's all he does. Uh, so it's not broadcast over it, it. And again, it started out as this private moment. And actually, what he's done the last few weeks is it, it, so he doesn't take a con. It doesn't create a controversy w- w- with his students, doesn't get any of his students in trouble. He, he's done it while they're on, while they're going back to the sideline. And what was neat is two weeks ago, he did that. He looked or, looked up and around him and it wasn't his team around him. It was the other team. <laughs> the other team had come out and seen him. So, you know, he's getting lots and lots of, 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 of support. You heard about this other student that crossed the finish line and put his finger up in the air. He basically said, hey, this is my physical indicator of thanking God for, for what happened. Of course, he's being, they're alleging he was taunting the other team, and they're suggesting there's going to be consequences. This type of thing's going on all across the nation. And what we've seen, at least in my experience, now I've been a lawyer for over 20 years, it seems that, at least historically, it's always been the ACLU or these other groups out there threatening school districts, and it's been kind of a knee-jerk reaction from the administration's perspective that, look, we've got to go the direction that the ACLU is yanking us because if not, we're going to be faced with litigation. It's a fairly recent development, isn't it, where Christian legal aid groups such as Liberty Institute are going in and saying, look, if you continue to violate these religious liberties, you're going to face legal action. Are you seeing any type of a change in the way that school districts are now reacting to the threats from the left, or are they continuing to kind of still have this knee-jerk reaction that we're familiar with from the past? You know, it really depends on what part of the country we're in. It, 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 it really does. I mean, what we are seeing, and we've actually come alongside several, several school districts, and this won't surprise you, Joe, in the South, usually in Texas and, and, and the southern states, where, where, where they get one of these letters uh, from some group like Freedom From Religion Foundation, who brags that they send out over a thousand. And we right. went, I had one of my staff attorneys do a study. How many lawsuits do they bring a year? You know, over the last five years, they've averaged three lawsuits a year. So they send wow. out a thousand letters. They only bring three lawsuits. And I think of, of the average three, usually two thirds of them are brought in Wisconsin where they reside in Madison. So mm-hmm. they're not, I mean, they're not bringing lawsuits. And, and we've been telling school districts, we, we have one that, that we're advising who got one of these letters. And we literally told them, you know what? You could take that piece of paper and just throw it in the trash. And, and, and that might be your best course. Well, you know, as a lawyer, Joe, lawyers don't like to tell their clients usually to throw demand letters in the trash. But I'm telling you, with Freedom from Religion Foundation, I, that, that wouldn't be, I mean, you know, it, it, depending on where you are, it, more likely than not, they're not going to bring a lawsuit. And even if you do, that, then you can defend it. And more likely than not, they're wrong on the law. 
and 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 that's you know like this Washington State case. I mean, this is this is a guy's private prayer. There, there's nothing wrong with that. And we're encouraging people. We've done something at Liberty Institute where we've actually provide where we have a protection kit where people can can get that a hard copy or they can go online at libertyinstitute.org and see well, you know what are your rights as a student? What are your rights as a teacher? And that's one of the things that I'll be sharing in Iowa. Fantastic, Jeff. If you'd stay with us, we'd like to hold you for one more segment to talk about Chaplain West Motter's case, maybe another that you're dealing with. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show had the general counsel from Liberty Institute online with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KOA on Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. We have Jeff Mateer with us. He's general counsel for Liberty Institute. He's been with them for, well, I don't know, five, six years, spent 19 years in private litigation practice. Before then, the Institute specializes in religious liberty matters, including free exercise, free speech, and public acknowledgement of religion cases. Been engaged in a number of high-profile cases, including the one involving Coach Joe in Washington State. Talked about that last segment. This segment, we're going to talk about Chaplain, Chaplain Wes Motter's case, as well as the case that we cover on Restoring Liberty about the gal who posted a Bible verse uh, and ended up being subject to court martial. Let's first just talk, Jeff, briefly about what's going on in the military. You know, I served for a period of time, still had a lot of connections with folk in the military, and I'm hearing almost universally from my friends that are still serving, still connected that the ideology of the military is changing, that the Obama administration has had real success in kind of changing the type of person attracted to the military, in part one of the reasons why it's happening, and this is anecdotal, it's not a study, it's just based on what we're getting, is that uh, it's almost seen now as a hostile arena for people of faith. We had Master Sergeant Philip Mock on this program yesterday, and he suggested that at least when he started in the military, he's in the Air Force, you know, 70, 75 percent of everybody was you know, a person of faith. And now those numbers are slipping dramatically. Do you think that that is in part a consequence? You guys see lots of military cases. Do you think that this is in part a consequence of this increasing hostility in the military toward expression of religion? Yeah, I actually, I actually do. I, I, I think that, that, you know, we used to have uh, up until the Clinton, you had a don't ask, don't tell uh, about about sexual orientation. I think the no, the new don't ask don't tell is 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 you're a person of faith, and you know one thing that we learned in representing Sergeant Monk was I mean there is a large segment of of military elites who who are opposed to any people of faith, and I, the good is I think Congress is now aware, uh, and that that there are people that are are shedding a light onto this, and that as a result you know we're holding the military accountable. Um, to, to, to when they do attack people of faith. Unfortunately, you know, you, you mentioned Sergeant Monk in, in talking to, to, to Philip's pastor uh, down there in San Antonio. After we were there for Philip's retirement ceremony, and, and he told us, his pastor told us, you know, there were seven other people who had issues with this commanding officer who felt like she was discriminating against them because of, 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 of their religious beliefs. Oh, but wow. none of them would stand up. But Philip Ooh. Monk would stand up. And, right. and and I think that's I think I think that's important because I, I, I think military members need to know that you do have rights and that 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 you don't have to take this and it doesn't have to be an atmosphere of don't ask, don't tell. Um, I mean that doesn't make us a strong military. And and Joe, it you, know, you know that. No, you it's weak that. it's weakening the military. It's taking away the best and brightest, the most patriotic. It it's converting the US military into more of a Western European military force, and of course their reputation precedes them or lack thereof. Uh one of the things that you made comment of uh, as far as the elites and their attitude against people of faith, you know, those elites or the you know, the filled grade officers have been selected, of course, by the Obama administration. And according to General Boykin and others, those of faith have been weeded out. I mean, there's good evidence that, in fact, there's been an active effort to separate out those that would hold to traditional values. And it really is pretty pathetic what this president has done and what his allies have done, because it is changing our military force from the greatest in the world to second rate. We aren't quite there yet. Still a lot of great men and women in the military. But like you said, 
they need to tar- start taking a stand. And one of those who took a stand, Chaplain Wes Motter, tell us a little bit about his case. We, General Boykin's been on this program before, talked about it, but just give us a brief overview and tell us where we're at with the case now. Yeah, w- w- you know, Wes Motter's a true, true American and hero. He, he's a chaplain uh, serving in the U.S. Navy. He has served members of SEAL Team 6. He's been on missions overseas. Uh, missions that he can't even discuss with us and couldn't come on the air and discuss with you. Well, he was stationed in Charleston, and uh, as a part of, uh, of his duties, he, he does one-on-one counseling with sailors and Marines. Some of those sailors and Marines began to complain about Chaplain Motter. We believe it was a setup um, because we, we, we believe it because they understood that he had certain biblical views concerning sexuality, concerning marriage, uh, that, again, was in conflict with, with, with this elitist view. And so the, these, these, soldiers, these sailors and Marines made complaints about him because he gave them biblical counseling. And his commanding officer relieved him of, 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 of duty. He didn't even get a, a chance to defend himself. And then as a result, he, he was set to go through a board of inquiry, which could have led to his court-martial. And he contacted us. And we went through the process of appealing that decision inside the military. And, Joe, we lost the first few appeals. And, and really heartbroken that you can't give biblical counseling one-on-one. Well, the good news is on September 4th, the, the admiral, our final appeal, went to, went to the two-star admiral. And the two-star admiral completely reversed the, the prior decision. They fully Yes, they fully reinstated Chaplain Motter. Uh, and, and you've served, Joe, so you know this is very uncommon. They actually they, they fully reinstated. They came to Chaplain Motter, and, and they asked him, Chaplain, where do you want to serve next? Wow. And, uh, I mean, I, and I'm told, uh, my, my friends in the Navy said that doesn't happen. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and Chaplain Motter, uh, I was with him this weekend. He and his family are on their way, and they're moving to San Diego, which they consider to be their home. They've been based there before, so they got, they're getting back to San Diego where he, where he wants to serve, and, and he has been fully, completely reinstored. Let's hope that admiral right? sticks in there and doesn't get kicked out before. I mean, we we need him to stay in there until the next president, hoping that we get a good one in, because I can guarantee you he's got to be on the short list from Obama's perspective to get rid of him. But kudos to that guy. He had backbone, obviously, standing up against kind of the direction that the military has been going at the higher, at the, as you put it, the elite ranks. Let's talk just real briefly, because we just have a couple of minutes left, about the soldier that posted the Bible verse in, in, in her work cubicle and then faced adverse action. Uh, there's been some discussion. We posted a story about her several weeks ago as to whether or not she was really insubordinate or whether she was really demonstrating her free exercise rights. Ask you to comment on that briefly and then tell us where we're at on, on that case. Well, the, the, and the, 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 the key, key element of, of Corporal uh, Sterling, a uh, Marine Corporal's case, is that the, the, in, deny, in, in issuing the court martial and on her appeal, the appellate court said, in its opinion, that posting a Bible verse, they did not consider to be religious exercise and therefore did not implicate federal law and the, and the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. That's why we at Liberty Institute, we didn't represent her at the beginning. We didn't represent her at the court martial, didn't represent her on that appeal. But we are representing her on her appeal to the U.S. Court of, of, of Armed Forces. And the reason we are is it's outrageous for a, a judicial panel of the military to say that posting a Bible verse is not religious exercise. And so today, Joe, we found out that the U.S. Court of Armed Forces has taken our appeal, and we, alongside uh, probably the premier uh, U.S. Supreme Court um, advocate, Paul Clement, uh, who argued Hobby Lobby, he's argued 75 cases to the U.S. Supreme Court. He's a good friend, good friend of people of faith. Um, He's our co-counsel in that case, and, and, and that court of armed forces has agreed to take the case. And so we will get to defend Corporal Sterling on her religious exercise rights. And, and to have a court say it's not religious exercise, we just couldn't left un, 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 undisturbed. We had to overturn that and seek to overturn that. Well, I hope that that goes well for you on appeal. Fantastic that the Court of Appeals took it. If people want to help out the Liberty Institute, obviously with the staff attorneys you have, the work that you're doing across the country, funding is necessary. Where do they go? Yeah, people and to, to learn more about us, learn about our cases, you know, the, the latest developments, because we, we just mentioned, what, three of 110, uh, they can go to libertyinstitute.org and, and see us there. And for those coming, uh, making the trek to Iowa, and I guess I'll see you there, Joe, we'll, 
you know, we'll have a good time. And it's exciting to see presidential candidates highlighting uh, these fights and battles over religious freedom in our country. Well, Jeff, I really appreciate the work you're doing as general counsel for Liberty Institute. Look forward to seeing you next week. Again, if you have interest in going to the conference, go to www.freedom2015.org. And if you register and type in the word Miller, you'll actually get a 50% discount. Again, freedom2015.org. Type in Miller, 50% discount. And keep in mind, if you're in Alaska, Alaska Airlines flies to Kansas City. The fares are not that bad. You can get down there, enjoy the conference, meet the presidential candidates. And if you're there on Friday, I'll put you on the air. We'll broadcast live from Des Moines, and you can give a shout-out to your friends in Alaska. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show, right back after the news.